All right, so, uh, oh, sorry, Kitty. Oh, I'm sorry, did I step on her? I stepped on the cat. Sorry, cat, are you okay? You gonna be all right? That was a horrible noise. Yikes, poor thing, I stepped on her. I'm sorry, I know, I know. Ladies and germs, welcome to Morris Custom Bicycles. And uh, thank you everybody for following um, this series on the, the Burley Tandem. So uh, with today's episode, um, I just, uh, I'm gonna have to explain a few things. Um, so the, I started filming this series uh, back in last June. 2020 um and so i you know it took a while to kind of get things edited and put together and and as we all know 2020 was kind of a garbage year um and i know it's kind of a cliche to kind of say that you know 2020 was the worst year ever you know it it's very possible that that's true. Uh, maybe for some of you, it was a great year. I, I hope it was. Um, as for me and my family, the latter half of 2020 was pretty devastating. And so there were a lot of things going on to the point where I wasn't filming as much. I just didn't have the time um, uh, or the resources or the energy really to, to film as much as I wanted. So... I, I didn't get around to doing as much filming on the tandem as, as I wanted. So that's kind of my excuse here. Um, and, and you'll see why. <laughs> um, here, let's check this out. <clears throat> okay, so what we have here is uh, a completed tandem. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> So like I say, I started doing this back in June and, um, you know, time just got away, away from me. So uh, let me explain what's happened. Uh, pretty much we saw everything as far as the fork. Um, the fork I got done in the last episode and here is just kind of a rattle can job uh, as far as the paint. And um, turned out pretty, pretty nice. I like it. Um, this paint here is just temporary. I will be putting the tandem into powder coat at some time, but but for right now, I just wanted to kind of get it get it uh, together and working so I can kind of ride it and uh, not really have to worry about it. I already have you know twenty you know projects that are between thirty and eighty percent done, so I didn't want to have the tandem be part of that. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so, you know, it, it's basically done, uh, as far as it's going to be, uh, as far as this year, um, I'll, I'll put it into powder coat maybe, maybe next year if, if I have time. Um, but, uh, yeah, fork, fork turned out nice. And, uh, I have put two little tiny bike rides on this bike, uh, just around the neighborhood with my son, just to kind of test it out and make sure everything works. But uh, I haven't put any serious miles on it, so. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, so the tandem, let me just explain this really quick. It was, I found it, uh, I think it was on Craigslist. It was 200 bucks. So I decided to to just go for it. Um, I looked at it and I noted that all the tubes uh, were straight. There's no dimples or nothing's crushed or there's no cracks. So I went ahead and purchased it. What I had to do was just kind of cover up anywhere that there was bare spots, um, you know, because you get surface rust really quickly. So I covered all those spots up so it kind of looks pretty hideous with the, uh, the, the gray kind of paint splotches on it. Uh, you know, obviously tandems, they kind of take a beating just being, um, moved around, you know, uh, being put on racks and, and, um, 
And so I think a lot of the scarring from paint is, you know, from a, a lot of just racks just going on cars. So it's got a lot of that, but it's it's all straight. The tubes are, are in good shape. So uh, all of the parts on the bike, they're either original to the bike or there are old parts that I had sitting around just to kind of get it up and up and running. So uh, the only things that are new are the wheel set, uh, the brakes, and cassette, and uh, rear chain. Uh, yeah, other than that, everything's original or just parts that I had laying around. So, uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's together. She, she functions perfectly. She rides nice. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to put more miles on it. Um, so let's talk about the fork. Cause I've had a bunch of questions about this and, um, why, why do this to the fork? Obviously, when you go to disc brakes, there's a lot of force put into uh, the fork. Um, so, usually if you get a fork made by someone like uh, Christopher Eigelhart or, or someone who's, who's really into making forks, the fork tab um, is always large because they're trying to stiffen up the fork leg. Now with a the tandem, there's obviously a lot more force into the fork. And on top of that, uh, we're running a huge rotor. This is a 203 millimeter rotor. So uh, that has to be taken into consideration when you build the fork. So uh, to err on the side of safety, I decided to put this truss section in here. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, the truss works like this. Um, the cross section of the original fork is just this wide, right? It's a little over an inch, whatever the, this tube is. And of course this tube does taper. Um, with the truss, the cross section of the fork is now increased to this size. So I've essentially made the fork legs, you know, much wider. Uh, you know, as far as the st structure. So the cross section has been increased dramatically and it does make a huge difference when you ride the bike, um, especially when you have to s slam on the brakes. The The forces into the fork are much, um, they're, they're dealt with much better this way than if I had just left the truss off. Now I could have left the truss off, but I just, you know, I. I think it's just safer and better this way. Some truss forks that you see out there, uh, especially on some tandems and, and, and a lot of mountain bikes, the truss will actually go all the way to the stem. And so they'll have an integrated stem fork truss section. And that is a slick way to do it. Um, and the advantage of doing that is that you would then increase the steer tubes uh, cross section dramatically, right? Here, the, the steer tubes cross section is the same, which is pretty adequate for this tandem. Um, but if you wanted to increase the, the steer tubes cross section, you could add that extra truss section. Uh, so in any case, that, that was the idea behind the, uh, the fork. So I hope that it kind of explains where I was going there. But like I say, you do see truss forks like this on some tandems. It, it it's, you know, it does, does happen. It's not like I just kind of made this up or I was some kind of genius and figured out a, a better way to, to, to make this. It, that's, that's not the case. Uh, I just basically uh, stole the idea and uh, made my own truss fork because, um, you know, with the, 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 the breaking forces, it's important. So that brings me to another fundamental question <clears throat> about the tandem. And that is, why go through the hassle and all the fabricating hours uh, to put disc brakes on the tandem? <clears throat> and there's a couple of reasons for that. <laughs> um, and I guess let me just preface this by saying, <clears throat> I, uh, I am, uh, I am a fan of uh, caliper brakes. So 
like on one of my personal bikes, <clears throat> I could have put disc brakes on this, but instead I went with the old school kind of Mayfax style brakes. In fact, I, I went to the trouble actually of machining parts to make sure that they fit uh, on the bike. So I've had to make all this stuff to just make sure that this would work. Um, <clears throat> so I do like caliper brakes and I think they are the best way to go for a road bike, especially. I, I'm not a huge disc fan on road bikes. Um, you know, on mountain bikes, I love them. Uh, I think disc brakes are the way to go. But here again, here's some Campanello brakes. Uh, these work great. And I, I have zero trouble with these, even when it's wet. You know, these, these brakes were great. And again, you're stopping the wheel from the outside. So it's a, a, a more efficient way to, to stop the wheel. Uh, the, the reason I went with this style on the tandem <clears throat> is that uh, the advantage that disc brakes have, especially in modern times here, is that I can change this wheel out um, and not really have to do uh, any major brake work. So let me explain. This is a 26 inch wheel. <clears throat> it's an older tandem and the 26 inch standard was adequate for then. Uh, 26 inch wheels are now becoming a much more of an extinct thing. So with the disc brake change, um, I can put 700 C wheels in here. And in fact, uh, I tried the the set, uh, the idea behind this was that I can throw in a 700 uh, by 30 or 32 I think it was a 32 and it fits in here just fine. So I can actually keep the same brakes and swap wheel sizes. So if I wanted uh, the bike to be a little more efficient on the road, I could change out the 26s for 700s and the brakes aren't going to be a problem. So that was the main reason with swapping over to the, to the disc brake. The other thing is that <clears throat> uh, because this tandem is very versatile, I can throw knobby tires on this and take it off-road, uh, which I plan on doing. Uh, some, some of the fire roads around here, and there's some, um, there's some nice kind of country rides that I can do <clears throat> uh, that will require knobby tires. And so if, if I'm in the dirt, I do prefer the disc brakes. So that was the idea behind this. So fundamentally, the, the disc brakes were, were just a great option to keep this uh, tandem versatile and, uh, and allow me to ride on different kinds of surfaces. So, so that's, that's that. Uh, next thing to cover was the, the spacing of the rear uh, dropouts. I had to stretch uh, the frame out here to accommodate the new axle size, which is, uh, I went to a 145. So to do that, <clears throat> I had to uh, do some stretching and respacing of the rear triangle, which uh, I've done on many, many bikes. Uh, this bike here was a challenge. I was shocked actually how much force it took to kind of just make a five millimeter <laughs> adjustment. Um, I think with this wishbone stay configuration and the fact that these are tandem tubes, so they're a thicker wall, a little more heavier duty, uh, I was really having trouble. I actually had to cut into the bridge here. And what I did is I uh, installed a spacer in this bridge that actually opened the uh, uh, space between the dropouts here and gave me the room that I needed for, for this wheel. And this wheel is awesome. It, it just drops in and out, no problem. And so this was uh, really the way to go. Uh, so it is respace. So on top of that, uh, I did have machine the tab. Uh, it was a, a dual tab, a split tab situation. So I had to make two and I had to be creative as far as uh, allowing this tab to work with the, the fender and rack mounts. <clears throat> uh, so, but it's, you know, pretty straightforward. And then I did add a brace. Now, I don't think the brace is necessary, but I just did it just to be safe. Um, these tubes are pretty heavy duty 
and the tab is so far back um, on the dropout that I don't think uh, I would get a lot of flex in this frame. But just to be safe, I did add it. And again, you know, running huge rotors, so the forces are, you know, quite large into the frame. So better safe than sorry. So um, anyway, so that is the tandem. Um, it's up and running, and uh, I'm excited to put some miles down on this thing. And, uh, you know, in another year or so, I'll uh, take it all apart and uh, get into powder coating and then, uh, you know, put some, you know, a uh, nice uh, component spec on there. Um, but that'll, that'll be in another time. So for right now, I got this thing up and running <clears throat> and I'm happy that I get to ride this now. So... Uh, I do appreciate all of you folks uh, for watching and following along on this um, little adventure here. Um, it's a lot of fun to do these projects. Um, I don't get to do them very often for myself. Um, and so when I can, I, 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 try, I try to squeeze the, the project in where I can in between the customers, obviously. So, but it's a lot of fun. Um, if you like this kind of crap go ahead and give me a like uh, subscribe and uh, thank you for all six of you folks for tuning in and watching and I will catch you on the next video